was included in the, in the story. This one's called Stuff and Nonsense. Oh, Stuff and Nonsense. That's what Thelma used to say every time the world seemed too silly for words. You remember Thelma and Shorty from over there at Paris, Texas. The pride of which is a water tower shaped like the Eiffel Tower with a big red cowboy hat on top. If you're new, Shorty stood five foot three, five six in his 10 gallon hat. He moved over to Paris from over there in Waxahachie, which is how we knew him. And <laughs> Thelma was so messy. And so Shorty's mother kept his childhood bedroom exactly as it was for 76 years, just in case. She wasn't thrilled with his choice in Thelma. Thelma was messy. He liked a tidy house. We didn't see them very often because they were East Texas people and we had little need to cross the Great Divide. When Shorty would ask about her clutter, Thelma would throw up her chubby arms, jingle her gold hoop bracelets, and shout up to Jesus, that is just stuff and nonsense. You know, I have stuff too. I hang on to my stuff. A key, for example. What's it for? I don't know. But I have had it since 1986. Why? Because you never know. <laughs> and this little remote control. I have 25 of them. What do they go to? I don't know. But I keep them all in different places in my house. What garment does I have this little button set? What does it match? I don't know. The garment? I don't know. But I keep it. And why? Say it with me. You never know. No. But then, we really do know, don't we? Who am I without my accordion folders of tax records I haven't needed in years? I have a junk drawer in the kitchen, a catch-all in the hall cupboard, a plastic crate in the parking space, a box in the closet filled with a clusterfuck of you never know. <laughs> Occasionally, I open the spaces and move the stuff to another container of stuff. My home does and always has looked spotless until you open up a catch-all receptacle of stuff. <laughs> I have rubbish containers in my soul, too. There was the day as a little girl when I dreamed of becoming a graceful dancer. That dream was shattered in an instant by a demanding ballet teacher. Her words, Debbie simply has no musicality, are neatly packed in the corner of the junk drawer labeled, don't even try. The memory is all but faded, but it's part of my stuff, and I don't want to let it go. Appearance insults from someone that happened so long ago that I can picture neither the event nor the name, but it's there just inside the useless bedside memory file labeled reasons to avoid mirrors. Over the years, much of the disorder has been decluttered. The better living through alchemical libation crate was cleaned out years ago. All the wine glasses and bongs are gone, replaced by a tough and loving support system and V8 juice. My drugs of preference are now organic vitamins. Today, happy hour is a nap. I remember an Easter time visit to Thelma and Shorty's. The front screen door was partially blocked by a giant plastic bunny holding a basket of fake of fate candy. The door couldn't quite open because of the pastel tribute to Jesus decorations on the country, the entryway credenza. Flowers, some real, some fake, and decorated eggs in every corner. The clutter annoyed Shorty because the Easter bonnet display rack left him no place to hang his hat. Shorty's mother thought he would surely divorce Thelma over that. She was thrilled, but he didn't, of course. But Shorty's mother always hoped. Thelma thought it was the reason he never was very affectionate to her. But when those thoughts of romantic neglect came, Thelma just threw up her hands and baked more cookies. A great deal of twaddle has been eliminated from my life and replaced, I hope, with more positive, life-affirming stuff. Perfect timing, I now have my head together just in time for my body to be falling apart. <laughs> more and more gibberish is giving way to either acceptance or the fact that I just don't care that much anymore. <laughs> maybe it's wisdom that has allowed me to trash some of my stuff, or maybe my supply of brain cells is now down to a manageable size. <laughs> oh, I still have plenty of stuff in my life, still have little piles of papers that need to be filed in folders that exist somewhere in the car storage plastic crate. And some stuff has been replaced by new or nostalgic stuff. This concerns me. The other day, somebody mentioned Lawrence Welk, and it actually interested me for a few minutes. <laughs> Very. Sometimes I create a whole new storage bin of stuff filled with new freakout issues about the stuff I have left behind and wondering where new stuff will come from, if at all. Or this is the beginning of the cool and groovy tchotchkes and disp the sh disposable shoulder pads from 1987. And may I tell you that when Shorty passed away, they found a key and a receipt 
from a storage place over by the highway. <laughs> Inside that storage was a clusterfuck collection of old newspapers, piles of girls, pinup girls' calendars from 1948, clustered piles of rusty car parts, and there, in the front, just inside the door, a large framed portrait of Thelma on their wedding day, with the blue garter from her leg draped over the immaculate frame. So perhaps we should all put bows around our stuff and throw up our little hands to the heavens and exclaim some nonsense to the entire calamity. <laughs>